you know, one of the things I was going to say was, uh, I know a lot of the people on the forums have asked, like, well, how much time am I going to spend doing group things, being in these group related quests, versus doing my personal story? So I was wondering if you guys could talk a little bit to that, like, you know, how much time, or is there choice? I know that there actually is a lot of choice in there. Well, pretty much the, uh, so the, the question that uh, Rob asked was, how much time are you doing group stuff versus single stuff? It's really up to you. There is very little content that you, well, there's no content you have to do single player. Your class content is not an overwhelming amount of your percentage. As you get farther in the game, it hovers in the sort of the 10, 15% stuff. There is some content you can only do with a full group. But none of it is crit path. You'll never get blocked by not having a group. So if you want to play together, and in fact, like couples, threesomes, foursomes, like groups that stay together play really well in the old public. And you can play and see everybody's class content, everybody's stuff. At the same time, you can play the whole game front to back entirely by yourself, and the only thing that you would miss would be the heroic content. Right, and, and you know, the reality is it's just like in the movies. I mean, you know, the, the team stays together for a while, and then everybody splits up for a little while and goes up and does their own thing, and, you know, Luke comes back and he's like, oh, Luke, you, you lost your hand. Dude, what happened? You know, that sort of thing. So, hey, like, I'm totally a Jedi now? <laughs> so, you will bow down before me, Han. Yeah, that kind of thing. So. Alright, yeah, I got a good question. Um, you know, you were saying you know, the class content and everything. So if I decide to start if I decide to start the game as a jerk and then decide to redeem myself later, do I have that chance to actually you know, be a good guy finally at the end or am I basically stuck as a jerk? You, uh, what, what you can't do is the uh, last minute uh, religious deathbed convention. Like, you can't, uh, you can't flip it easily. But you still got lots of quests to do, you still got stuff to do. There's in fact even some interesting stuff, right? Like, uh, you can actually go if you really want and take diplomacy as a crafting thing and just start sending everybody up, all your companions out into the world to do charity and good deeds. And like, what do rich people do when they get old and realize they've been evil all their life? <laughs> Right? When you go out and you try to make up for it at the end. And you absolutely can. <laughs> you, you are never stuck playing a bad guy the whole game if you don't want to. You can, you can change, just like in real life. Uh, another question uh, worth bringing up, I think, uh, is companions. You know, you just mentioned them. Uh, a lot of people, I guess, want to know how much, uh, how much of their story, how much of your storyline are they involved in? How much of your storyline, I'm sure he just said it on the mic, so, but I'll repeat it. Um, how much of your storyline are your companions involved with? Um, your, your companions are uh, with you with you for the long haul. Um, if, if, uh, if, you, if you bring them with you, they will have things to say to, to, to your conversation. Uh, they will react to your choices, um, sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. Um, you can get to know them or not get to know them. You can... Turn them into crafting beasts if you want. Uh, your, but but uh, your companion is 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 uh, with you from the start, and you can build uh, we hope a real relationship with them if you like. <laughs> And beyond that, like the companions, uh, like any Bioware game, you know, you have romanceable companions, you have killable companions, which, uh, let me tell you, you decide to kill a companion in an MMO, you better be damn sure about what you're doing. <laughs> Seven years later, that guy's still dead. All right, he's just, a, you go into that X base and they're like, hey, why don't you grab that guy? And you're like, oh, uh, I killed him? So I guess I won't be bringing him today. Uh, there are, because the game is so big and there are so many different classes, we've been able to do more with companions than we've ever, ever dreamed of in any game. There are so many companions, and every class has their own, that we've been able to go and do very unusual companions. We've been able to do, we have dozens of romances in the game, which means we can do the crazy train wreck romance. We can do the, like, sort of odd, a little power play romance. We can do all kinds of, we don't have to just hit the main themes because we've got so much depth to work with. I write the awkward romances. <laughs> I got a question to all the way back. Hi. Uh, hi, my name is Lance. My question is about the world mythos and kind of the inspiration for the Sith culture. How, like, if you were drawing philosophies or if there's like a metagame in the MMO that you can kind of be a part of in a world faction sense. Sure, so um, I'll take this one, because this one did end up totally in my my camp in the early days. So the Sith were a big, big puzzle for us. Uh, his question was, where does the, the Sith culture come from, the Sith mythos? Uh, 
It is very clear in the movie, Sith are evil. They're bad. This is not a great structure for creating a place for people to play. Right? Evil cultures do not, in the uh, in the Normandy, think of themselves as evil. Right? They, the, uh, the line I've always used is they don't get up in the morning and say, Hey, let's make some evil toast. Put our evil butter on it. Uh, this is So we had to actually get into cultures that that had all of the aspects that the Sith have that have existed in the real world, right? So the Sith have slavery. Yeah, so did the Romans. The Sith were entirely, entirely lore-based. You have a very small percentage of people who have absolute power. Well, that's the vast majority of Western history, right? We've had kings and queens and lords and aristocrats longer than we've had anybody else. The Sith are hugely militaristic, so we had to get into that. I'm actually, so my degree is actually in ancient history, so this is kind of my shtick when I get in, was how to make the Sith feel like real people. And what we really did is just blended together little bits of different real cultures, looked at where their philosophical leanings had come from, and then honestly put the Sith in a place where it made sense. Right? Empires grow to be repressive and to support repressive militaristic regimes when they are put under pressure. So we have the Sith Empire, who is chased out of the galaxy entirely, almost eliminated, and have spent a thousand years of rulers being told, your enemies are out there, and if we slip a minute, everybody's dead. So the average Imperial person is not sitting around saying, man, I wish we had us some democracy. The average Imperial person is there as part of a military culture who believes what they're doing, believes in the survival. Yes, sometimes they think the aristocrats are a little crazy, because, you know, being ruled by Sith is problematic sometimes. But in general, most people actually do support the culture and government. We've run out of batteries. Uh, no, I'm still here. This is fantastic. You know, uh, another thing uh, I was going to ask you guys to talk about is uh, each each player class travels to multiple different planets. How much of their story takes place on each of these planets, or do they all visit all the planets? Are we good? Okay, we're good. Uh, you heard the question. Um, how? <laughs> Uh, how much of your class story takes place on the various planets? Do you, do you visit all the planets? Um, I would say, for the most part, you, you get to do part of your class story on, on most, if not all, of our planets. Um, even if you don't have uh, class content on a particular planet, um, there are plenty of reasons to go. There's lots of world quest content, which I wrote. And uh, <laughs> um, there, every, every world has its own story. Uh, your, your class gets recognized there. Uh, your, every class is a different way to solve what's going on in that world. Um, but yeah, every class gets to experience uh, most, if not all, of, of the worlds in a way that is that is personal to them and their class storylines. Yeah, there are a few, people keep asking, there are a few faction-specific worlds, uh, and usually they're worlds that it just makes sense from the mythos to be faction-specific. Uh, the Jedi start on Tython. A huge part of the plot is the Imperials don't actually know where Tython is, so it doesn't actually make sense to let the Jedi wander through and kill noobs on Tython. So. But for the most part, yeah. Although it is actually really fun to go to your same class side, your same faction side origin sort, blood world, that you're not supposed to be on. I love going as a trooper and just going into the Jedi quests with my friends and blowing everybody up. The other thing, too, is that um, you may have, depending on your on your faction, you may have very different experiences of a planet. So Imperial players who go to a planet may have a very different story experience from Republic players who go to the same planet, and, that, and that's by design. Well, and even uh, different players on the same side, there are definitely planets where, uh, I think the one that sticks out the most is the Bounty Hunter. The Bounty Hunter very often goes to a world and does not give a crap what is happening there. So as the Jedi are dealing with like the politics or what's happening in the thing and they're learning all about the culture, the Jedi is literally, the bounty hunter is literally ignoring all of that. He's going to get it from the world quests and the world art, but he, he's just like, every conversation might just involve him punching somebody in the face and saying, I'm looking for this dude. <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, anyone else have any questions? Okay, uh, I got you. Where did he go? Oh, 
Hey, we all know the species in the SWTOR. Um, you guys always say we can't really release a lot of information. But can you give we us, do say that. <laughs> can you at least give us, a, give us a number of playable species? Or uh, a vague number? Of uh, playables, like more than? Not, you know, not more than three. I, I, can, I can do more than, yeah. Uh, there are more than four. There are less than 90. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're always adjusting things. Everything goes into, this is a, a lot of the Q&A, and obviously that's not writer Q&A, so, uh, you know, I can be a little fun with it. A lot of the Q&A that comes up at this point in the project is very frustrating for the fans, and we totally understand it. So, James Olin is our director. You guys know that, like, he did both Baldur's Gate games, Neverwinter Nights, Knights of the Old Republic, the original Dragon Age, okay? This is the man who's at the helm, and he always says the same thing, which is the whole end part of the product is just polish. Everything that you think, everything that you had for philosophy, everything that as designers you think you want to do, well now you're wrong. And the people playing the game are right. So all of these questions come down to playtesting. We've got playtesting going on now. We're going to have more and more and more playtesting as it goes. And we have learned that we were wrong so many times. <laughs> so one of the things people have been asking to touch back for the flashpoints, just to give you guys an example, when we created flashpoints, you could play them once. It's a story, right? You go through the story, you get your decision, you made your thing, you, you go out. People hated it. Oh my god, people got into the playtest and they were like, but I didn't do the other thing, and now I want to run it with my friends, and now I want to play it over here, and I want to do it here. So guess what? Now you can play Flashpoints multiple times. Right now, we're getting feedback on the amount of characters, the depth of characters. Obviously, the problem right now is because we keep changing stuff around, every time that there is a, uh, hey, this character versus this class, uh, there's a big controversy about it, a big discussion about it, and it goes back and forth. So. There are more classes that can, there are more species that can go on more classes. There are more combinations than you have seen, uh, and it's really not going to gel until way near the end. And we're going to hold some stuff back. Like, like release. Like, you're not going to get to know every single thing about the game before it comes out. Uh, yeah, we gotta wrap it up here, guys. Thanks everybody for your questions, though. And if you guys give the writers a hand of applause. Woo! Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, if you guys want to come back at 5 o'clock, we'll be uh, showing you a little tour of some of the planets. So, come back. Woo!